Hi LEGO fans, it's time for some more classic LEGO Harry Potter and this time we're going all the way back to 2002. Behold the majesty of the yellow faces. Today I'm going to be unboxing, speed building and reviewing set number 4714 Gringotts Bank from LEGO Harry Potter. Although this is not the only LEGO recreation of the Wizarding Bank Gringotts, it definitely is the oldest. Gringotts Bank also appears in the 10217 Diagon Alley set from 2011 and in the 40289 Microscale Free Gift with Purchase from 2018. I think it's fair to say that this version of Gringotts is somewhat less impressive than the 10217 version. We do however get a really nice feature allowing Harry and Hagrid to travel down to the vaults on a minecart. This is of course based on Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone where Harry and Hagrid travel down to the Gringotts vaults. You can tell my version of the set was made for the USA market because they've spelt Philosopher wrong. This 250 piece set went on sale in 2002 and retailed for 25 Great British Pounds or 30 US Dollars. Today mint in box this is worth about $109 or in used condition about $36. The 250 piece part count includes 4 minifigures. We have a HP004 Harry Potter with blue open shirt, torso and tan legs. He's worth about $5 and also appears in the 4708 First Edition Hogwarts Express. We also get a HP009 yellow faced version of Rubius Hagrid. He's worth a little bit more and is valued at about $9. You'll also find him in the 4707 Hagrid's Hut, 4709 Hogwarts Castle, and in the rather rare Harry Potter minifigure collection Gallery 2. We also get not one, but two goblins. A HP 078 goblin with black torso which is exclusive to this set, and a HP 079 goblin with a dark red torso, also exclusive to this set. For some reason the black one is worth about $10 and the red one about $6. That really makes no sense because they're both as exclusive as one another. We'll split the difference and say they're worth about $8 each. I picked this set up earlier in the year on Facebook Marketplace for $15. It was advertised as new, but taking a look at the box, I don't really think that's the case. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that the seals have been resealed, and when you give it a good shake, it sounds like there's a lot of loose pieces inside. Hopefully all of the pieces are there, otherwise this is going to be a very short video. The set consists of a rather vague recreation of Gringotts Bank. It looks like the designers just slapped the word Gringotts on it and called it good. We also have a rather evil looking goblin with a cart full of treasure. What I presume is the Hogwarts vault which comes with some rather nice metallic elements. And a runaway minecart on a tragically short section of track. This should be interesting. Over on the back of the box Lego is inviting us to just imagine. Instead of simply showing us what the finished build will do, we're positively encouraged to tear this apart and make our own stuff. The image at the top looks a lot like the A build, but I love the addition of the minecart coming out of the back of Gringotts. If that doesn't tickle your fancy, you can build your own astronomy tower. Poor Dumbledore. You could also build a fireplace, or the Escape from Gringotts ride at Universal Studios Florida. I once got stuck on that ride and had the privilege of being extracted and given the backstage tour. Also on the back of the box you get a reminder of all the cool Lego Harry Potter sets from 2002. I'm pretty sure I've got all of these in my collection. And you get a closer look at some of the shiny things and the printed elements that are found within the set. Although this was advertised as complete, you can never tell. So let's open up this box and see what we've got inside. As I suspected, this is definitely not new, but I'm really not worried when I only paid $15 for it. A quick scan of the contents confirms that all of the minifigures are here, but the set has been pretty loosely broken up, so I'll go ahead and dismantle this completely. There we go, I always like to do a full breakdown and rebuild of any set that I buy. That way you can tell really easily whether you're missing any pieces and then replace them from your parts collection or order them on Bricklink. This looks in great condition, like somebody built it once and then put it back in the box, which is awesome. So of course we got about 250 LEGO elements. We also get a 38 page instruction booklet. Another one of these Harry Potter posters which show us all of the cool sets we can buy. And a 2002 LEGO catalogue. These are always fun. Inside we have the latest sets from LEGO Star Wars. Just check out those magnificent yellow faces. 
And look at this, we have a teaser for LEGO Galidor. This range of toys in the associated TV series nearly bankrupt LEGO in the early 2000s. We also have the LEGO Soccer range with loads and loads of custom elements. Of course the magnificent Harry Potter. Adverts for a bunch of software. The magnificent failure that was Jack Stone. Then there's Alpha Team which was actually a good range. More Alpha Team. Some LEGO Racers sets. Then we have the LEGO Studios range where you could make your own movies using a crappy digital camera. The magnificent Life on Mars series. We've got LEGO Dinosaurs and then a fantastically futuristic train. And then Bionicle which really helped LEGO to overcome the disaster that was Galidor. I really must do a Galidor video one of these days. On the back of the catalogue you could even join the LEGO Club for free. I'm going to go ahead and put together set number 4714 Gringotts Bank. And today this is going to be a 60 second speed build. And here is the completed 4714 Gringotts Bank from LEGO Harry Potter. Build time today was about 30 minutes and this is actually a little bit more impressive than I thought. Including the owl on top, this stands about 9 and a quarter inches high. Despite looking absolutely nothing like Gringotts Bank, it's actually quite a fun little set. We're going to start out by taking a look at Gringotts Bank including some secret hidden features. Then we'll check out the minecart and hopefully not kill Harry and Hagrid. And of course we'll be taking a poke around inside vault number 713. We'll also be taking a look at the four fantastic minifigures. And because I really like you guys, we're also going to be taking a look at every Lego Harry Potter goblin ever made. We've got a lot to cover today, so we'd better get rolling. So this is the 2002 version of Gringotts Bank, which looks nothing like the real thing. It's possible the designers didn't know what Gringotts Bank was going to look like, or more likely they were just going for the minimum viable product. Just in case there was any doubt about what this was meant to be, we do have a really nice printed Gringotts nameplate. The one I've attached to the front of the building has a little bit of a misprint. Thankfully around the back things are perfect. In fact on further inspection it was just a bit of grime. As a wise man once said, Ain't no safer a place, not one, except perhaps Hogwarts. Gringotts is of course the Wizarding Bank and was founded in 1474 by a goblin called Gringotts. Wizarding money comes in three different denominations. Bronze Knuts, Silver Sickles and Golden Galleons. There are 29 Knuts in a sickle and 17 sickles make up a galleon. As well as the exterior of this Gringotts build not looking like the real thing, the interior is very different to what you might see in the movie. Many of the interior shots for Gringotts Bank were filmed on location in central London. There's a place called Australia House that has a very grand interior. You might recognise the fancy chandeliers and you should definitely recognise that flooring. I don't think you can actually visit Australia House but you can find it on the Strand in central London. So the interior of this version of Gringotts Bank is clearly not a patch on Australia House. See I won't be at all impressed to learn that the fancy chandeliers have been replaced with wall lamps. We actually have four of those, two on each side. We do have a counter which is positioned at Goblin's head height. And on the counter we have one of several 1x2 printed tiles. This shows a bag of coins in 10, 20 and 30 denominations. Given there are 29 canuts in a sickle and 17 sickles in a galleon, I think these goblins may have some kind of counterfeiting ring going on. Removing the counter for just a moment you can see the safes that sit behind. These are actually made from Lego post boxes and can open up to reveal gold coins. The set includes a number of these gold plated coins which come in similarly doubtful 10, 20, 30 and 40 denominations. 
The really nice thing about this set are the custom printed sand green post box doors. You get two of these with the Gringotts bank set, and another one inside 4729 Dumbledore's office, which is a review for another day. Interestingly, these safes are actually mounted on turntables so you can move them around. This for me is just an annoyance because you can never quite get them lined up properly. Now one thing you might have noticed is that the bank teller's counter is held in place by four handles on each side. The counter is loosely positioned and can be removed completely revealing a secret. Hidden beneath the floor is a 2x2 printed tile which shows a scroll, a cauldron and some kind of magical pot. I've really no idea what this has to do with the story and I'm sure the designers didn't either. That said, it is a really nice printed piece and it actually appears in five of the very early LEGO Harry Potter sets. Up on the roof of the building, apart from the Gringotts sign, we have some wildlife. No, I'm not talking about the Ukrainian iron belly. Instead, perched way on top, we have one of these older style owl moulds, this time in black. There's another white owl, which bears more than a passing resemblance to Hedwig. And a Lego rat in this unusual white colour. Going back to the owls, you'll notice these have changed quite a lot over the years. The version on the left was in use around 2002, and the one on the right in about 2011. I almost forgot to mention that the owl at the top is hiding a bit of a secret. The sand green elements are mounted on top of a trap door. Inside you'll find a secret hiding place for some of those bootleg galleons. It looks like Hagrid and Harry have some pressing Hogwarts business to deal with, so we'd better roll on out. Thankfully Hagrid's remembered the key, so we shouldn't have any problems getting into the vault. The set includes this fun, interactive setup which enables you to recreate the journey down to the vaults. Or at least to the end of this rather stingy piece of railway track. Needless to say, that didn't work out well for any of them. I mean, look at poor old Harry, he's gone and cracked his head open. The launch system is super simple and uses gravity instead of magic. There's a pair of these old fashioned railway tracks and these are mounted on a pivot to get the tracks at just the right angle. For illumination and decoration, we have another pair of lamps on either side of the track. At the top of the track, there's a pivoting platform which propels the minecart towards its destination. Hidden away underneath, for some reason, we have another one of these 2x2 printed tiles. I've no idea what that's all about, but if you do, then do be sure to let me know in the comments. The minecart is a very simple build and significantly less sophisticated than the one shown in the movie. It has just enough space on board for the Goblin, Harry Potter and Hagrid to take a ride. It also has another couple of bags of money here at the back and a couple of steering handles there at the front. With just the right amount of fiddly finagling, you can get those handles to sit within the hands of the Goblin. I'm not sure if this is grip hook or bog rod, but he sure is a snappy dresser. The wheels on the minecart are actual train wheels and that means they fit perfectly on the track. It also makes for a very smooth action when travelling down to the vault. And so finally, Hagrid, Harry and Bogbrush, or whatever his name is, have all safely reached vault number 713. 713 is the Hogwarts vault, but you could easily say this might be Harry's vault. Harry of course didn't know that he had a vault, but as Hagrid put it, Didn't think your mum and dad would leave you with nothing now. Seriously, that has to be the worst Hagrid voice ever. The vault is securely built into one of these large rock pieces. Perched on top, keeping an eye on proceedings, is this Lego bat. We also have a little illumination thanks to this trans orange flame element. Providing access to the vault, we have a hinged door, but it looks like we're gonna need a key. Key, please! Well, I guess a goblin's gotta earn his galleon somehow. The cross-shaped hole on the front of the vault might seem like a funny shaped keyhole, but it actually does a really good job of holding this antique brass key in place. With key inserted, we can reveal the treasures within. We have the normal complement of golden galleons, but also a mysteriously wrapped package. We can't actually see the Philosopher's Stone, instead it's shown wrapped in a package on a 1x2 printed tile. You could be forgiven for thinking that the Philosopher's Stone is the same thing as the Resurrection Stone. In fact, the Philosopher's Stone was created by Nicholas Flamel and could extend one's life, hence Voldemort's interest. The Resurrection Stone, which is one of the Deathly Hallows, is an object that could summon people from the dead. Or in a roundabout fashion, of course. Incidentally, it may look like LEGO have been really generous with the gold coin elements. You do get a lot in this set, but I keep moving them around so it may look like we've got more than you expected. 
Goblins are tough little beasts, but moving wizarding valuables around Gringotts Bank can get tiring. Thankfully we have one of these carts to move stuff around. Inside you'll find a couple of 1x2 printed tiles. One of these is a bag of coins and the other is a trans blue tile with gold stars. I guess that's going to be a spell or something. That was the 4714 Gringotts Bank and I've got to confess this was a lot more fun than I thought it might be. However we've only seen the building part of the set and we still need to take a look at those minifigures. 4714 Gringotts Bank from 2002 contains four minifigures. Harry James Potter. Professor Rubius Hagrid, a goblin with brown legs and a blue torso, and a goblin with black legs and a red torso. Collectively today these four minifigures have a resale value of about $30. First up we have the HP004 Harry Potter minifigure with the blue open shirt torso and tan legs. He's worth about $5 and also appears in the 4708 Hogwarts Express set. You'll find a review of that and instructions on how to motorise it on my channel. This is technically the first Harry Potter minifigure as HP001, 2 and 3 were all Hermione minifigures. The legs are a standard Lego element and pretty boring. The torso on the other hand was created exclusively for Harry Potter and shows him wearing a blue t-shirt with a blue jacket. There's no printing on the back of the body and similarly no secondary expression. The facial print is the same design they used in 2004 when they brought out the flesh coloured versions of Harry Potter. It shows Harry wearing his trademark spectacles and has a red lightning shaped scar. The hair isn't quite as unkempt and sticky uppy as JK Rowling describes it in the book, but it is a good fit for Harry Potter and you'd have no problem recognising this character. As I film this video we're in the 18th year of Lego Harry Potter and as you can see the Lego Harry Potter minifigures have changed a lot over the years. Next we have Hogwarts Groundskeeper, Care of Magical Creatures Professor and Father of Dragons, Rubius Hagrid. By the way he's also the guy who first opened the Chamber of Secrets and nearly got expelled. He's also done time in Azkaban but it was a big misunderstanding. Hagrid is a big lump and I mean that quite respectfully, he's actually made up of very few parts. We've got this squishy hair and beard piece, we've got a head underneath and then everything else is not meant to come apart. You can of course pull the arms off if you really want to but I wouldn't recommend it. This is one solid lump of plastic which is snapped together out of separate parts but uh, yeah this is literally one piece of Lego element. The front of the torso has some printing which shows what Hagrid is wearing underneath his overcoat. He's wearing some kind of red suit with a silver buckled belt. On each side of the overcoat you'll see a moulded pocket and then around the back we've got a little vent at the bottom. The back of the torso has some moulded detailing showing off some stitching on the back of the coat but the tab you see below the shoulder blades is just holding Hagrid together. I really like the way the all-in-one hair and beard element lets that little smile peek through and if you remove it you can see Hagrid has quite a weird facial expression. He looks like an off-coloured Gru. But by far the strangest thing about these early versions of Hagrid are the hands. You'll notice that he's got moulded fingers. This is something only the Hagrids seem to have and it doesn't appear on any other minifigures. Hagrid technically isn't a minifigure but Lego has made some fine versions of Hagrid over the years. In fact we must get around to taking a look at every Hagrid ever made. Maybe we should do that in an Every Hagrid's Hut video. If you'd like to see that do let me know in the comments below. Finally for 4714 Gringotts Bank we have this pair of frankly creepy goblins. Clever as they come goblins but not the most friendly of beasts. These particular goblins are not named but it's reasonable to assume they might be Griphook, Gurnock or Bogrod. Goblins are a highly intelligent race of small magical humanoid beings with long fingers and feet that coexist with the wizarding world. They're well known for their financial acumen, for their silver work as seen in the Sword of Gryffindor, and for a bonus fact they have their own language known as gobbledygook. Neither of these characters have any printing around the back so we'll concentrate on their front features. Rather than standard minifigure heads we have these ghoulish goblin heads. I find these particularly disturbing because we have no printing for the eyes. Also disturbing is the fact that these clearly have hair moulded into the head, yet the colour of the hair is exactly the same as the face. In fact I would venture to say that these goblins bear a passing resemblance to Freddy Krueger. Being characters of limited stature both of these goblins have these small format child legs. This goblin has black pants and an exclusive dark red torso. 
The torso shows a white shirt with black bow tie, what looks like a knitted vest and then a red jacket. The other goblin has brown pants, the same shirt and tie, but then has a blue vest and black jacket. These goblins might be the first goblin Harry Potter minifigures, but they're definitely not the last. Would you like to see the rest of them? Of course you would! As promised, here is every LEGO Harry Potter goblin minifigure ever made so far. I know what you might be thinking, and in fact you are half right. Professor Phileas Flitwick, head of Ravenclaw, Charms Master, and a former dueling champion is in fact half goblin. Phileas Flitwick makes his first LEGO appearance in 4842 Hogwarts Castle from 2010. This particular minifigure reminds me of one of the Beatles and is worth about $7. After waiting 8 years, we get this version in the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts collectible minifigures series. After a change of costume, Flitwick's latest appearance was in the 75964 Harry Potter Advent Calendar from 2019. If you like Advent Calendar videos, you'll find 3 playlists on my channel where I open up every door on the 2017, 18 and 19 LEGO Advent Calendars. So while technically Flitwick might be only half goblin, these guys are the real deal. They come from the highly collectible 10217 Diagon Alley set from 2011. Apart from a change of costume, the 2011 goblins are very very similar to the 2002 goblins. You'll also notice a change in skin tone with the newer goblins gaining the flesh colour. Apart from using a different colour plastic, the mould seems to be identical. These guys were made to accompany the 2011 Gringotts bank build. As such, they wear pretty much the same uniform, consisting of a white shirt, brown bow tie, tan vest and black jacket. The Goblin minifigure is well overdue an update, and if rumours are to be believed, we may well get one in September. That's when the Harry Potter collectible minifigure Series 2 is rumoured to be released, and one of the characters which is rumoured is Griphook. So there you go, as promised, every LEGO Harry Potter Goblin minifigure so far, and of course the Half Goblin Flitwick minifigures. Going back to the original minifigure lineup from today's set, this is the perfect blend of characters for the 2002 Gringotts Bank. So that was set number 4714, Gringotts Bank from LEGO Harry Potter! I can't say this enough, I've really enjoyed playing with this set, it's awesome. It looks nothing like Gringotts Bank whatsoever, but it is so charming. I love the custom printed Gringotts elements. Vault number 713 with all those shiny coins, and most especially the mine cart and track. Those yellow faced 2002 LEGO Harry Potter minifigures and of course the goblins have such a charm and appeal. The yellow faces and hands were only around for two years before being replaced in 2004 with the flesh coloured versions. It was also great to get custom printed elements such as the post boxes, the package containing the philosopher's stone, and whatever this thing was hiding beneath the bank. I really didn't have high hopes for this set, but it has exceeded my expectations. It's not nearly as good as the Gringotts we got in the 10217 Diagon Alley set, but this is a lot more fun and I've really enjoyed reviewing it. In fact, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I have making it. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome LEGO Harry Potter content. I've still got a bunch of these classic sets to cover, and I think next time we might be going back to school. I'm so pleased you're able to join me today, stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next build video!